All right, guys, welcome to Wayne's World Garage. We're at the sawmill today. Something new, it's Wednesday. Happy hump day. We got a bunch of stuff to do. Let me show you what we got going on today. We've got the big cherry that Alan and Phil and I dragged out maybe last year. We've got some elm. I don't know what elm is, but we're gonna make some boards out of that. And then we've got these poplars that Cody, Alan and I whacked down the other day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cherry, probably slab that at least get a couple nice slabs out of it. They've got an event this weekend and maybe somebody wants some of these nice cherry slabs. The elm, I'm thinking elm is good furniture wood. At least that's what I've heard. So for the elm, I'm going to uh, maybe make it into uh, one and a half inches, six quarter by five inches. And I think we're gonna save the poplar for the weekend because Sunday we've got a big event where they wanna have a 25th anniversary, I think, for the park who's, who hosts our equipment here. So we'll do that on this weekend. And these are pretty nice sized logs actually. So the cherry is 20 inches exactly on this end. So that's perfect for this saw. The elm is 16. This is a funny looking one. I don't know what we're gonna get out of that because that's kind of screwed up a little bit. Poplars are, it's a good sized tree. This is the butt end of it. We're at 27 inches at the butt end of it here. This is an older poplar we had out. This is 20 inches, so that's perfect. That'll work out pretty well. Let's check the other ends of these guys. This is that poplar. Oh, we're down at 25 inches. There's gonna be a lot of boards on this. There's gonna be a lot of boards on this. This is a smaller one, he's 20, still. These are, these are decent sized trees. This is the elm, here's the butt end of the elm. 21, 22, we'll square him up a little bit. And the cherry. 18 or 9 inches, that's just a gorgeous piece of wood. So, happy days are here. Let's get these guys going, and hopefully have a nice crew show up today, and we'll saw plenty of nice lumber. Maybe we'll do some slabs. Oh, I should've worn the green shirt today. It's a green shirt today. I almost did. <laughs> the only, it, the, if, you, if we cut big slabs, then yes. it's hard to make boards out. You know, you're, yes. you're stuck using them as, as tabletops. Table do we want to cut if we cut a couple. boards, then you get a little more flexibility. Okay. You know, one and a quarter, one and a half. Yeah. So if we cut a slab, you mentioned the pith the other day. Yeah. We don't want the pith in our wood pretty much. Is that? Try to avoid it. Uh, probably sealing the edges helps. Okay, but um, the pith, so if I did a slab, leave the, don't use the pith part of it? Right. Don't okay. Use the very center. So for the cant, I'm learning because I had that walnut, which is eight inches wide, and that was a waste. I'm not gonna cut anything eight inches wide. I'll yeah. cut it maybe five or six, 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 six at the most, yeah, right. five or six. Okay, yeah. I'm just trying to, as I learn about yeah, the woodworking. You can glue them together if you need bigger. But, but you can't make them, yeah. Yeah, you're You can't make them thicker. I'm wait. You're wasting. So for this elm, I thought, I don't need any elm, but maybe the guys at the wood shop would, or some of you guys would. Maybe, we'll have to see how pretty it is, if at all, when we cut it open. I mean, this has a pretty big crack. Oh, that piece there might not be a lot to it, but I'm thinking, again, six quarter by four or five inches. This one has a crack this way, so we should keep that in mind when we move. Okay. Yeah, this crack goes all the way down. Yeah. Does it go all the way down? It goes at least all halfway. Right. All right. It could be garbage wood. Maybe yeah, it's we'll firewood. See if it's yeah. Pretty. And we loaded, Tom and I loaded up these guys, or Tom did, I watched the poplar, but we didn't want to, we're not going to saw them today. We're going to save those for Sunday. Well, you don't see him, but Tom back there, the red man, the IHC guy, is running the engine today. So he's engaging the clutch. Before we get going, he puts eyes on everyone and makes sure we're all ready to start and nobody's in the way of this saw blade when it starts spinning. It's his job and my job to try and keep things as safe as we can. And we're gonna start cutting this gorgeous piece of cherry. We changed our mind. We're not gonna do slabs. We've got enough slabs. So we've decided to make boards out of it. Probably gonna cut five quarter boards, maybe six quarter by about five inches. So I'm hoping to get two nice cants out of it. And if you look carefully at this uh, piece of cherry, we were smart enough to paint the ends, but what I did, now you can't see it looking at it, I drew a square on it to see how we wanted to cut this guy up. Maybe you can see him a little bit. Anyway, we drew a square on it, and that way I knew how much slab to cut off, 
and then we can start making two nice cans out of it. We hope. So my first cut was a heavy six quarter. So we're gonna move the set works back just a little bit, a couple notches. So we get a little bit, a heavy five quarter would be nice. And these will be just gorgeous boards. The good news is when we resaw this to take the little hinge off the back of it, it's working quite well. So the only time that's not working right, we believe is when the log moves a little bit on the carriage. So we kind of have to avoid that. And that means really, dogging the log down or the cant down properly, pulling a little bit of tension on both of them, all the dogs before we set them. log roller is working great, especially that we've got a process figured out. And the way it kind of works is Matt and I will kind of hold on to it. Matt operates the hook, puts hook, don't have to put it all the way around, where Alan puts his thumbs on the controls to roll the log. And it's just fabulous, really. And it's good teamwork. And now that we've got a good process in place, it just works great, especially on these larger logs. This one's not that big. It's only nine foot long. It's still heavy, but it's 90 degrees outside and we really don't want to get too hot rolling these logs. We've got some nice boards coming off here, but I really want the cants to be about five to five and a half inches. So I'm gonna take one more board off of here and then I'll be able to saw this log in half and I'll get two really nice cants out of it. Let's see how that works out.
Now, if you notice here, I'm just running this through to take off the hinge at the back. There it goes right now. And when the saw is set up properly, and we've got the thing dogged right, it works perfectly. And that's what I did. I ran my hand across it to make sure it was cutting perfectly well, which it is, which is the way to do it. And it saves the guys from having to take it off down the other end. No skin off my back. Now this here is a little bit tricky and I'm not the best at it, but we've got a pretty good sized cant, weighs over 50 pounds, so I'd rather not drop it off where it is. So what we're doing right now is we want to keep the carriage moving forward till right about now. If I go too far, the cant drops off and the guys have to push it back, which we don't like doing. If I go the right amount, like I did, the cant just falls out and it's easy for Alan to take it out and push it out of the way. Worked out pretty well this time. Not always though. Well, that's one nice looking cherry cant. We're gonna have some nice boards out of it. But to speed things up a little bit, Al and I are gonna put the second cant on top of the first one so we can get two boards for every push of the carriage. And it works out pretty well, except these old geezers, like Alan's like 85, no, Alan's 60. He's older than me and I'm 66. It's a heavy piece of wood, it's a heavy cant, but we managed to you know, fight this thing and get this thing up there, push it back, and stack it and when they're stacked it works out pretty well because we get two boards per slice the only tricky thing is is towards the end of the cut you've got to be a little bit careful because when the two can't stacked on top of each other can get a little bit wobbly so you'll see at the end we unstack them Alright, well now we're making boards. Check these guys out. They're beautiful. They're five quarter by about five and a half inches. And we've got two cans, one can't stacked on top of the other. And we're cranking through these guys. There's a little bit of rot on the inside of this log, 
But for the most part, this log is not bad. These are the logs, the cherry tree that Alan, Phil, and I cut down mm, almost, it must have been last year. Maybe it was more than that. But it sat for quite a while. Um, it didn't dry. When they're sitting like this, they don't dry. Uh, in the middle of this one, as you can see, the top can't got a little bit of rot to it. Regardless, it's a nice piece of wood, and there's some good boards out of this guy. And uh, it'll work out pretty well. Hopefully some woodworkers are going to want these boards. So what's happening here is Eagle Eye Tom realized that the back part of the cant, the lower cant, um, towards Allen's end was not quite up against the back of the knee, which we don't want because we'll have cockeyed boards. So what we're doing is we're going to reposition this thing and make sure both cants are fully seated against the back of the knees. When we initially put them down, I pulled the set works forward a little bit, and I thought that would make them both the same. It did the top piece, but the bottom one stuck out a little bit. So, Tom, thanks for catching that. Now we'll have really nice boards. So I get a little bit nervous when the cants are stacked on top of each other because they could flop out on us. And if they flopped out on us, hit the saw blade, there could be some drama. So it's a little bit easier to take them apart, unstack them. And as you recall, since we had that big gap in the lower cant earlier, if we had run it through the saw and it had gone this far, it could have been catastrophic. So it's a good thing that Tom caught those. Thanks, Tom. And it's, I think, a good practice especially when you've got an old sawmill like this, to just de-stack them when you get towards the end so that they don't have any problems and then basically collapse on you. Because if they collapsed when you're cutting it with a big saw blade, that could be a problem.
Alan and I took a vote. We decided this next board, which I was going to slice a little bit smaller, has too much rot on the back side of it, as you can see. So we'll put it in a carriage, and we'll send it downtown, and it'll go in the slab pile for firewood for somebody. That's about it for this episode of Wayne's World Garage. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We hope you appreciated it. Thanks to all the guys for helping out. We've got Alan. We've got Matt down there rolling the logs. You can't see him at the other end. We've got Tom, who sharpens the saw very, very nicely, doing the offloading. And we've got the other Tom helping do the offloading. And we've got the newbie, Cody, who's helping offload also. And as you'll see a little bit later in the next video, when we cut some of these elm, which it turns out I don't think are really Elm. Uh, we really needed Cody's strength for an 18-year-old guy. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you didn't, unsubscribe. Watch another channel. <laughs> Just kidding. Take care. Have a good day, guys.